peace for Ukraine or Uranus. So if you have money, I advise you, give it away. Give some away at least. Give it to some charitable organization that you trust. Or go out, give to the poor people who you yourself believe really need. Or hire somebody to come with you, you know, buy things to help the poor people, mm? help the people who need medicine. I don't tell you I'm better than anyone. In medicine, uh, you know, I complain, yeah, oh, terrible. Yeah. Sometimes I scold myself. Imagine many people would die to get my medicine if they could, but they don't have a chance to get it. Even how bitter it is, if it cures their disease, they would be willing to take that bitter pill immediately. And here I am, with so many doctors taking care of me, and I say, oh, this medicine's too bitter, I don't like it. Oh, I say that, but I still take it. You know? <laughs> I should be more grateful, and I know that also, but of course I'm grateful, I thank them, of course. But when it touches my tongue and I forget, <laughs> I forget that other people suffer and don't have the chance to take medicine the way I do. They don't even see a doctor in their whole life, you see? Of course, when I have time, I reflect on that and I change. It's just the human mind that reacts that way, yeah? But that doesn't mean that I don't know this bad, okay? Yeah, you did that to me many times, all of you, so I vent it sometimes, so you, you get the same pill. See that? Huh? <laughs> Everybody comes to me and tell me about their problems. How about my problems, huh? huh? <laughs> I also have the same human body, yeah? Okay? I have a lot of lousy helpers. Don't complain to me about your husband and wife. You chose your husband. You chose your wife. If you have problems, it's not my problem. Got that? Huh? So I also told you I'm stupid. I chose this job. And it worked over, over time. I overdo my job. Hmm? If I just did like those gurus, you know, famous gurus, I go very high. They have higher, much higher days. They say a few words or something, and that's it. You don't have a chance to see them. <laughs> not so close. <laughs> Maybe some, I don't know. Mostly not. Huh? Okay. Every Sunday, go to a big temple. Yeah, built with precious substances. And I'm living in a little wooden house and very grateful already. I keep thanking Kao Sung many times because that house is built the way I like. It's just logically useful, you know. It's nothing to be envied, it's just a wooden house, okay? And the ants profited from that many times more than I did. <laughs> I just came and lived here, just, uh, uh, this is the second time or third time, I don't know for how long. This time is longer than last, up to now, but mostly the ants eat it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they have to build it again, because they did not uh, protect the wood very well last time. In the beginning, they say they built only a small room, one room, you know, uh, with a little kitchen, and later the ants help them to demolish it, <laughs> and then they build again, and it uh, began to get a little bigger. I guess they Kaohsiung learned their lesson. If you build three rooms, and if the ants eat one room, master still has two rooms, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in case. And if the ants eat again another room, she still has a roof over her head until we think of how to deal with it. <laughs> I guess they learn very fast. And the, they gave me everything I need, unconditionally. You have to know that. Because I didn't even dream that I would come here. I have Sihu, 
and I have Europe. I have places everywhere before. I can have any house until the disciples come, and then I won't have it. Either they take it over for me, or something happens because of their karma, then I have to leave anyway. So I'm lucky to have any house that I don't have to take care of. They built it for me already, I think, 19 years ago, right? Cao Xiong, 19 years ago, did you build this house? I haven't been here because I often go to Sihu's group meditation. I don't go to different small groups like in the beginning of my mission. So the ants demolish it and they build again, you know, a little bigger. I have one kitchen and the kitchen is very tight, you know, it's like a corridor and they put they put a gas stove it, and you can just stand there, turn around, and go straight to the other room. You <laughs> get that? <laughs> well, it's enough. Normally, I don't cook a lot anyway. If I'm alone, I just cook like one, one part of rice and leave it there, make a chop suey or something, and eat it for many days. Or a soup. It depends on what I have. Or just brown rice, sesame, and fruit, if I have. If I don't have fruit, I don't eat fruit either. What you don't have? You just? What? Don't eat. Correct. How do you know? <laughs> How do you know everything? <laughs> Whatever I have, I use. If I don't have, I don't use. That's very wise, no? Huh? What do you think? Yes. I'm worth it of being your master, no? Correct? Yes, yes. They don't know language. A channel? What channel? For the Vietnamese? 104.1. A one zero four and point one. Oh God! <laughs> All right. Một trăm lẻ bốn chấm một. Hiểu chưa? Hiểu không? Biểu rồi. Học tiếng Anh không chịu học. Huh? I told every one of you more than ten years ago. Learn English, no? No. Nobody learned. Too busy getting married, making children, huh? And earning money. Don't care what Master says, it doesn't matter. Mm. English is so easy to learn, more easy than even your own language. I don't see any other language more easy than English. Huh? Very simple. And I don't speak like high-level English. I speak very plain English so that everyone understands. The same in Vietnamese, the same in Chinese. Even in my poetry, I don't try to make it flowery so that people think I am educated. I make poetry that goes straight to the heart when you listen. I don't make it for show. I explain the heart's feeling to another person's heart's feeling. So it's very simple. Simple language, like simple life, it's the best. Because sometimes you read a book, a philosophical book or something, you read the whole page and you don't understand what it is getting at. Yes. Yeah, it's like that. They talk a lot. I don't know how they can write so many words for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting time to think, to write it down. Wasting people's time to print it. Ah, but there's one good point about that. At least they give employment to the printing company <laughs> and the bookshop. And it helps some people who have nothing better to do. <laughs> they read that book again and again, passing the time. <laughs> it's helpful in some way. Sorry, I take back my criticism before. It's helpful <laughs> if you write nonsense or anything, just write it. Uh, it helps somebody to have employment, somebody to pass the time. Even if they don't understand, they buy them, put them on the bookshelf. Big names, you know? Wow! The less they understand, the more valuable the book. <laughs> because nobody can say anything to criticize it. 
Nobody understands anything about it. So it must be something extraordinary. <laughs> that means it's absolutely outside of humans' understanding. <laughs> so it's something very special. So you see, it's a very funny world we live in. Huh? Something simple, they think it's complicated. Something very complicated, they say, wow, that is a good thing. <laughs> they worship it, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's funny, sometimes, sometimes I look at the world with different eyes, and I feel the world is really a funny place. Many things are simple, but no one understands them. And many things are complicated. I don't know if they understand or they just say they understand, but they like it. That's why the world is in the stage it is right now, because we complicate our life. We waste our time on things that are not really important. Many times I've seen the way people do things. I wonder why they do it that way. Run around, run around. Just like sometimes you people ask me questions. You don't go directly to the point, and run around in a circle un until I had it. <laughs> and I say, stop, because I don't know what's the point. Even if you sit there listening until tomorrow, you still won't know what he wants to ask. What is the question? You know, what's important? But this was like this. No wonder not, not a lot of people are enlightened and not a lot of masters would like to come here to teach. Remember, if you read the autobiography of Yogananda, his master, Sri Yukteswar, ascended to another world, and heavens assigned him to be the teacher in the astral world, remember? Yes. And then he said to Yogananda, because I have been kind of good in the world, so now I'm able to teach somewhere better, where the beings understand better, more elevated in spiritual knowledge. Remember that? Yes. Did you read the book? Yes. No, I guess just a handful of people read it. If you forgot that part, you go back and read again. Even just an astral world, just one step beyond our world, the master of Yogananda was already appreciative of the beings, their intelligence, and uh, common sense or spiritual elevation. One step more. But mind you, the astral world has more than 100 different levels. So maybe he was assigned to teach at the highest level, you know, like almost at the border of the second level. So of course they have more spiritual understanding than the humans here. They just don't have the body like we have. This body also affords us many things, a lot of pleasure, a lot of pain, a lot of different experiences, not necessarily good or bad, just different experiences. But for that, we suffer a lot. In this world, not everybody can claim that he's been the happiest man all his life, or the happiest woman, you know, all her life. Until the moment you leave this world, then maybe that's the happiest moment. But for most people, it's not. Most people, they think dying is a terrible thing because they're not prepared. I am preparing you, you see, for the time of departure because then you are so used to it already and maybe you are looking forward more or less to that time. And mostly, Master tells you in advance so you take care of everything before you leave. 